in terms of the depth of, of this particular pond, mm. here on the shallow side, it's 0 0.5 meters. Then in the middle is one meter mm. deep. Then on the deeper side is 1.5 meters deep. So, so it forms a slope like that. Oh. Yeah, because during the day, the water in the shallow region of the pond becomes warmer. Mm -hmm. And the fish will be here in the shallow side. During the night, the water in the deeper side is warmer and the fish will drift to be on the deeper side. Oh. And this ensures that the fish is growing very well. So if the pond is shallow throughout, mm. then you find that the growth rate is poor. Because during uh, the night time, the fish uh, is affected by uh, the coldness. So it's important that we have the slope. Yeah. So during the day, they're in the shallow. During the night, they're in the deeper. And that's why a river, mm. the design of God, the river, it goes like that. Aha. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Because at night, the water in the deeper region of the river mm. is warmer. Because during the day, as the heat is hammering on the water, mm -hmm. uh, water uh, is a bad conductor of heat. Mm. So because of the bigger volume of water in the deeper area, mm -hmm. so the water will retain the heat. This pond is deep. It's deep. Yes, a bit deep. So I find, it because it's a bit deeper, the growth rate of the fish here is much higher than other ponds and that's why we always advise the depth of the pond is two meters really fish can see <laughs> yeah fish, fish eyes are very 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 tough mm. Mm. there are fish here Ah, nothing. You can't. It was running away. Yeah. There. Yeah. <laughs> ah, the water is too much, and so you can't catch the fish like that. So, so normally, we drain the water up to the knee level. And here we are seeing these two aerators. These are submersive aerators. They go at the bottom, or they are put at the bottom of the pond. And their role is to increase or supplement on the amount of dissolved oxygen inside the pond. These aerators are sucking this oxygen from the atmosphere. So oxygen is entering through here, all right, through here, and is pumped into the fish pond at the bottom. Now, this is good because, see, we have a lot of debris at the bottom of the pond. So the art of putting this oxygen at the bottom of the pond ensures that eh, the debris at the bottom of the pond is decomposed so that eh, the pond bottom is clean. So as long as the pond bottom is clean, eh, the growth rate of the fish will be okay because, see, there won't be any ammonia and nitrates and nitrates in the pond. And that improves the health of the fish. Two, these aerators also are important. As you can see, uh, they are creating an environment suitable for fish to grow. Because if you go at Kafue River today, or you go at Chambeshi River, I've been there myself, Go at Zambezi River, you find that uh, the water in the river, it appears as if it is boiling. Hey, 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 you see, look at the fish, okay? So, this environment is suitable for better fish health and growth. So then, uh, we are creating a river environment inside the fish pond. Fish farming in Zambia is booming. We have seen a steady growth in the sector. New fish farmers are coming in almost every week. And we are part of the growth strategy ourselves 
because we go in the provinces of Zambia to work in a row or recruit new farmers. We train new farmers all the time here at the Breathing Fish Farm. We have been in all our provinces to show people the value of fish farming, even as the president is talking about it. So we have heard the message of the president that we must be involved in this industry. And as Breathing Fish Farm, we are one of the trainers in the country. We have been in the provinces to go and train other Zambians interested in fish farming. So we are seeing a steady growth of the industry in Zambia. Soon, Zambia will be the fish basket of the Sadiq region. So So fish are trainable. So now it is all here. Throw here you can see. This is this is grower feed. Fish feed also, it has a number of types or categories. We begin on fry mash feed. We feed the fish on fry mash feed until the fish has grown at least up to 20 grams. Thereafter, the fish is fed on crumble until it grows up to 80 grams. And thereafter, the fish is fed on pre-starter feed until it reaches up to 120 grams. Then thereafter, the fish is now fed on grower. This is grower feed. So the fish will be fed on grower feed until it grows up to 300 grams. Okay. And thereafter, we change the feed to finisher. Finisher, we feed the fish on finisher until the fish matures. So, 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 so maturity here means the fish has reached up to 400 grams average body weight and the fish is ready for harvesting. Yeah, so, so how do we know that it's time of changing the feed? We change because every two weeks we sample away the fish. We use a cast net and a digital scale to pick a sample of the fish and its weight. Kuno! 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 Hey! 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 This is nice. So that we see the growth rate of the fish. And so every two weeks, we are weighing the fish. Every two weeks, we are weighing the fish. The water in this pond, this water here is greenish, as you can see. This color is not ready or blue or white or black. The color is greenish. Now, this is not really a color per se. To us, it appears to be a color. But these are these are tiny aquatic plants these are phytoplankton this is the natural food for fish even in the rivers and lakes so the fish in the rivers and lakes uh, it grows on its own we don't buy any feed to go and offload in the river do we we don't so fish feeds on phytoplankton so those are tiny plants yeah which are the greenish so the greenish are the leaves of the tiny plants so they are able to make their own food through sunlight so when they make food in sunlight they produce dissolved oxygen which the fish requires to breathe Okay, so this becomes a double gain for the fish. Yeah, so, so as long as there is a phytoplankton, then also 
there shall also be an organism we call zooplankton. It feeds on phytoplankton. So, the fish, it obtains the proteins and the fats from zooplankton. But it obtains the vitamins and carbohydrates from the phytoplankton. Yeah. So, the water in the pond require to undergo a process of fertilization to change it into greenish color as we can see like that. And in that case, we use organic or, or inorganic uh, manure or fertilizers. Yeah. So especially urea. Urea is used a lot to help change the color of the water from a colorless color to a greenish color. So before the fingerlings are stocked in the pond, the water has to be greenish. Why? We want the food to be available, the natural food to be available. We want it to have dissolved oxygen in the pond. So as the fingerlings are stocked, they find both the, the oxygen as well as the natural food. Similarly, our mothers, when a baby is born, the baby is fed on breast milk alone. It's the same with fingerlings. They must feed on the natural food from God to improve on the immunity of the fish as well as improve their health. Okay. Before we introduce the artificial feed to boost or to speed up the growth rate of the fish. And so we use a stocking density of eight fingerlings per square meter. So in one pond, we have 10,000 fish. Uh, we allow the fish to grow and reach an average body weight of 400 grams at harvest time. That is table size. So it means that in one pond at harvest time, we get four tons of fish. Fish takes six months. But if we are good at water management, to manage the quality of the water, it is possible that our fish will be ready in four months. So the tricky part or the secret is the management of water quality. All right. And that is the turbidity of the water, the pH of the water, and the temperature and dissolved oxygen in the water. So the fish farmer should ensure that all these parameters are within the range for better fish health and growth.